my name is Alessandra Angelucci, um, and I am a professor at the University of Utah. And my lab studies the structure and function of neural circuits in the visual cortex. Hello, my name is Marianne Bijanzadeh. I'm the first author of the work we present today. I performed the research in Alessandro's lab when I was a graduate student at the University of Utah. In this video abstract of October 10, 2018 issue of Neuron, we will be discussing how visual cortex processes local and global information in a visual scene. Visual signals from the outside world are relayed from the retina to the visual thalamus, or LGN, to the primary visual cortex, or V1. From V1, information ascends to several higher areas via inter-aerial feed-forward connections, and higher areas, in turn, send information back to V1 via feedback connections. In V1, neurons only look at a tiny region of the visual scene, which is called the neuron's receptive field. Information through this small window is ambiguous, so a V1 neuron cannot figure out which object is seeing. To understand what is seeing, the neuron needs to integrate spatial information from outside its receptive field. For example, adding information from the near surround region just outside the receptive field allows this V1 neuron to see that what it was seeing through its small receptive field was part of a tree. Adding additional information beyond the near or local surround that is from the far surround additionally allowed this V1 neuron to see that this tree is embedded in a forest. So in this study we asked, how do V1 neurons integrate local and global visual information from outside the receptive field? It is known that V1, like all neocortex, has a laminar structure consisting of six stacked layers. Each layer receives specific inputs from other parts of the brain, specifically inputs from the LGN, the thalamic nucleus, that receives inputs from the retina, terminate in layer 4C of V1. Within V1 itself, neurons in layers 2, 3, upper 4 and 5 have prominent long-range connections that travel within these layers for several millimeters. Finally, higher cortical areas such as area V2, V3, and middle temporal, or MT, send spatially extensive feedback connections to layer 1 and 6 of V1. Because these different connection types had different spatial extents, we hypothesized that the tiny receptive field region is generated by connections from the LGN that are spatially restricted. The local surround instead is generated by long-range horizontal connections within V1, and the global surround is generated by spatially very extensive feedback connections from higher visual areas. To test this hypothesis, we used linear electrode arrays oriented perpendicular to the cortical surface to record the electrical activity, specifically local field potentials of neurons within the same cortical column, simultaneously across all layers of V1. As the electrode advances in the cortex, all neurons in the same column have similar receptive field size and location. That is, they see the same part of the visual scene. To understand how this columnar receptive field integrates visual signals from outside the receptive field, we recorded V1 neuronal responses to artificial stimuli called gratings, presented inside the receptive field and at progressively larger distances from the receptive field. Okay. In vision science, we like to use artificial stimuli um, such as gratings uh, because these stimuli are well controllable. Uh, moreover, uh, these uh, grading stimuli evoke very strong responses from V1 neurons. To localize the specific cortical layers, the responses evoked by these stimuli, we computed the current source density, or CSD, from the LFP signal. From the CSD, we estimated the onset latency of the response evoked by the different visual stimuli in each layer and determined which layers were activated first by each stimulus. In this schematic, the onset is when there is a negative oscillation representative of current sync. Our rationale was that the layers that are activated first by each stimulus type are indicative of the circuits that initiate the processing of that visual stimulus, as different layers receive distinct inputs. We found that stimuli inside the receptive field, local and global surround, activated different V1 layers. In response to the small stimulus inside the receptive field, layer 4C was activated first. Local surround activated layer 2, 3, upper layer 4, and layer 5 first. In response to a stimulus in the far surround, layer 1 and 6 were activated first. Consistent with our hypothesis, these results strongly suggest that inputs from the LGN carry visual information to the receptive field. 
long-range horizontal connections within V1 carry the visual information from the near surround to the V1 column. And feedback connections from higher visual areas carry visual information from the far surround. In summary, we found that different layers and therefore different circuits process information in the receptive field local and global surround.